Okay, and welcome back everybody. We got another product here from PowerSmart to review. I am officially affiliated with PowerSmart now. I want to mention that. This one is a very interesting thing. It is a brush cutter, an electric brush cutter, 40 volt. It is also a string trimmer. So this is a two-in-one. Um, but that is very interesting to me. You know I like my brush cutters. This will be the first electric one that I have. Very curious to see how it does with the little saplings and bushes and stuff. Um, it's uh, exciting. Anyway, we're going to take a look inside the box here. And this is the way it comes shipped. Now normally on these reviews I pull out the battery and the charger before I even start and get them started charging, but I didn't this time because there's no reason. As it turns out, being 40 volt, it actually takes the same battery as the 40 volt lawnmower. And so that one's all charged up already, so there's no reason to get a jump on it. And so what I'll do is, uh, after I get this put together, I'll plug in this one so that we can uh, run it later in the day. I think that I'm going to be doing the uh, string trimming first, and we'll use the uh, battery on that one for that. And then later on, we'll grab the freshly charged battery and go do some brush cutting. So anyway, let's pull everything out of the box and take a look at everything and put it together. I think it'll be pretty easy because unlike the uh, last trimmer, it's not a uh, three-in-one edger, articulating head, all kind of other stuff. This is pretty much straightforward like a commercial trimmer. So it should go pretty fast. Let's pull it all out. Okay, here we go. We've got everything all laid out now. We got the two parts of the shaft. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how that goes together. This is tapped, obviously, like a screw. That end fits into this end. That sheath goes over these threads, and you screw it on. And then the two halves are together. And I'll show that in a moment, but let's go over what is here. Starting with the best part, here is the brush cutting blade. And if you look closely, it's got this guard around it. It looks like you can take it off and put it back on. I'm very happy to have that. I wish I had that for some of my others. But it is sharpened, so um, it's good to have that protection on there. So this is good, and that is a metal blade. I was uh, kind of wondering, being electric, if that was going to be plastic or not, but it's metal. And so here's your screws for putting things together, the handle and the shroud, probably. This, I don't know what it is. I see it on the, see it on the box. It looks like a little bit of an extra leverage handle. And I'll find out its official name from the instructions in a moment. And there's your regular handle, and your battery and charger, instruction book. And there is the string trimmer head. And it comes with these tools to fill up two different size Phillips plus this uh, wrench. And this is a shoulder strap. I don't use these types of things. I do this for a living. I'm very used to it. And then here is the shroud and we'll see how that screws on there but then here is the head the head is very solid thick metal it's got some good weight to it and you might be you know a, might complain that it's uh, a bit heavy but it's not oh, well yeah it's pretty heavy but can you got to consider that it's going to be offset by the weight of the battery in the back so if you're holding it in the middle it should balance but uh, for something like this, you actually want it to be heavy duty like that. So that is a good sign for a brush cutter that that is very heavy and very heavy duty and very solid. And it looks like it has the uh, clamp for the brush cutting blade on there. And to get the string trimmer head on there, you just have to take this bracket off. This bracket. And... Uh, clamp and uh, put the string trimmer head on. Anyway, uh, let's open the instructions and find out what these things are called. Okay, so putting the two halves of the shaft together, obviously you just put the key into the keyway there, and then you bring the sheath over and screw it on. And now you got the whole thing all in one piece. And so let's take a look at the handle and see how that goes on. 
Okay, to start putting the handle on, as it turns out, this big long shaft, they're calling a uh, locking block. And I don't know what that means, but I wanted to show the underside of it quickly because you have this damper, this cushion here, which is uh, foam rubber. And that is to cushion the vibrations on the handle. And this flips over, as you can see where I put that on the shaft, so that when you flip it over, that screw will go into, see how it looks like a uh, form of that cushion? When you flip it over, that will slip over there, and this will slip into the hole. Now that I've explained all that, no, it actually did work. I was thinking for sure that wouldn't work. Anyway, and then the, um, the handle itself goes on the uh, other side. Like this. And then you have to, and that, it's not, uh, I'm going to have to work on getting that to sandwich because of that uh, foam insert in there. you got to squeeze it together and get it to fit. And then you drive your bolts through there, and I'll get that set up for the next scene. Okay, so I'm sure you can see how I got that now. Top of the handle, bottom of the handle, and the uh, cushion is in between there, and you just tighten down these bolts, and it holds it all snug. And that takes care of the, the handle. Okay, so here's where it gets a little tricky to film. We're going to put the... Uh, shroud on here now and that goes right on to this part right here and so you have it upside down again this is where the string trimmer head would be and you have to line up you can see the hole in the yellow piece goes on just like that to where it lines up with that hole on here so that this bolt can go through and it has to go through from this side because it's only tapped on one side so that's where it's going to be screwing into. So let's get this thing on here. Get this bolt through. I can find it. There we go. And then you screw it in. And yeah, that is, it is on there, you can see. And I will uh, screw that down and then the head will be on there. Ta-da! Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna show you how both of the heads go on there, both the uh, trimmer head and the uh, brush cutting blade. And we'll start with the brush cutting blade. Uh, yeah, yeah. first of all, we gotta figure out what direction this spins because you got a big arrow. Hang on. Actually, common sense prevails. As you can see, the, uh, the, uh, the sharpened blade on the uh, string cutting is on this side, so that must be turning this way. So it'll spin around this way, so we need to get the arrow to point towards, towards that knife. Do you see there? towards the sharpened it, front end. So, that is counterclockwise. So what you do, to get, keep this from, from spinning, I'm hoping that you can see the, uh, there's a little keyway there, and you stick your screwdriver in there to keep that from turning. And so, so you see there now, it can't turn. So that'll let you turn that bolt with the, uh, wrench Oops. And of course keep in mind that everything is turning the opposite direction that it normally would so uh, lefty tighty righty loosey so <laughs> you turn to the left to tighten turn to the right to loosen take that off and clamp off get the blade on there Put the retainer back on, and you see, okay, so I think it needs to go clamshell down to get a better hold on there. 
That would be my opinion. And it would barely hold on to the teeth there. Yeah, it's holding on. Okay, then you put your bolt back on to the left. And then tighten it down. The whole time you're holding this, keeping it from spinning. And there you go. This is going to be hard to do. Ah, not so bad. And now you're ready for brush cutting. Except you got this thing sticking out. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So the screwdriver came apart. <laughs> yeah, like that. Make sure you don't have the screwdriver in there. Okay, so now I'll show you how to put the uh, trimmer head back on. Now don't get the wrong idea. It's not a cheap screwdriver. It's a reversible screwdriver. <laughs> so you, you can flip it around and use the other tip. And so anyway, you had that jammed in there to get this loosened again. Take all this off. Okay. And so for the trimmer head, you use nothing because it just screws on. And that will be to the left. Spinning that to the left. I don't think I have it. Yes, I do. Till it's tight. Then you remove your screwdriver and you're ready for weed whacking. And that's exactly what we're going about to do. So let's put this battery's not charged yet, so we will grab the battery out of that mower and we'll be set. All right, we got the battery on there, and uh, don't worry about it being the wrong color battery. So they have the yellow ones and they have the red ones, but 40 is 40, any color it happens to be. So you can put the red one on the yellow one and the yellow one on the red one, as long as they are 40s. And so there's a look at it, all put together and upside down. So let's flip it over. And there it is. Still not completely sure. Maybe I should read to find out what on earth this bracket is sticking out. Hold on a second. All right, so I looked all the way through the instructions. I really don't have an explanation as for what this, uh, this bar sticking out here is. It's called a locking block. So anybody in the comments want to enlighten me, uh, maybe it's just an extra place to hold on to. I don't know. So anyway, yeah, I just want to show you something quick that the instructions mentioned so when we get to the brush cutting applications there's going to be a strong uh, tendency there's going to be a desire to put this saw blade on there but the instructions are saying clearly not to they're saying only these uh three bladed things and i understand why because i mean the saw blade is one of the things that is the hardest for it to turn and it's um, probably not going to work out too good. Maybe it's too much torque on the motor. I don't know. But uh, in case you're all, you're going to probably be saying put the saw blade on it, but I can't. Not uh, not yet. <laughs> this is a review video. So anyway, just wanted to mention that. So does it work? So let's give it its first run. I've fed the string out just past where the uh, blade is going to be cutting it off. So let's give it a spin. Okay, it works. So let's go trim with it. Alrighty, we're getting ready to do some trimming here. We're going to be, I'll start with this strip right here. I mowed the rest of the yard and I left this strip just for it so we can test it out. And then uh, after that, boy, look at this. We're going through a drought right now and we got yards that water and yards that don't. That's what like most of them look like right now. But we're in one of the ones that water. Then after that we're gonna trim around these rocks out here. See how that goes. And I'm wondering 
because uh, something that we do a lot with our string trimmers commercially is we put it up on its side and we can edge with it and so like around the planter over there see if that works just to explain what I'm up to and let's give it a try So it looks like the trick is to go just left and right with it. I'm used to being able to go all directions with the commercial stuff. Forward, backwards, diagonal, whatever. But um, because the guard is on, I usually take the guards off of my commercial equipment. But the um, guard keeps catching when you're going like straight. So uh, when you're going just left and right, it uh, seems to be perfect. I'll show you. And there we go. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. There's a ton of leaves there, and they, they're just there. It's just one of those things. But it's doing just fine. I don't know if you can hear it, but when it goes under load, it does kind of shift into that turbo mode, just like the mowers do. I think it's doing that. We'll find out more when we have the brush cutter on there. But let me just try a little bit of edging with it and see if that even works. Yep, it works just fine as an edger. It works just perfect as an edger. So this is this is good. You just got to hold it up. You know, there's no wheel on it. And I also discovered uh, what's happening with the turbo mode. It's actually a two-stage uh, trigger. Here, I'll show you.
So I don't think it's going into turbo mode all by itself. It's just one of those things where if you feel it slowing down, you kind of pull it, uh, pull the trigger harder and it goes faster. Interesting. So anyway, uh, that'll wrap it up for this stuff. Let's go get the brush blade and go off into the woods and have some real, real fun. Okay, so we're out here on location now. We've got some wax myrtle saplings here. These are all about 18 inches to 2 feet high. And it's just the perfect test. And so that's what we're going to be using. We've got the brush cutting blade back on it. And it's looking awesome. And I'm actually, I never changed the battery. I'm still running the same battery because if you look here, press it, the, uh, it is still showing three out of three lights. So, we'll just keep using the same one. Anyway, uh, we'll see how it does on this stuff. I have a feeling it's going to have no problem. And if it does just fine, then we might try something thicker like what they got back there. Anyway, let's give it a try. Okay, so it did just fine. Definitely stuff that would be too thick for the string. Commercial or otherwise. Um, so there's a good demonstration right there already of what you would normally use one of these things for. But it does look like it will do something even thicker. So let's move on to the uh, thicker brush back there and see what happens. Okay, so we got this one here. It is, I don't know what kind of a shrub this is, but near the base there, if you look closer, that's about three quarters of an inch, which is probably higher than recommended. Just letting you know how thick that is, and we'll start at the top and work our way down, just so you know if I make it to the bottom, that's what it's cutting through. it did it. I am um, a little bit surprised. Now I think that it was stopping on its... I don't think I let off the trigger. So I think that it does kind of stop when it's uh, in something that's too thick. But just to give you an idea of how thick we're going through here, you know, that's thick stuff. And that encourages me to try this next one. Where did it go? There it is. Palmetto. Let's see.
wow. So, I wasn't expecting it to do that. This thing is absolutely just as strong as my uh, gas-powered brush cutter. Look at this. I have a 58cc gas-powered brush cutter, and this thing is absolutely just as strong. I'm shocked. I'm absolutely shocked. It is very good. Very effective. Definitely the real deal. Uh, amazed, really. Uh, so, um, I guess that'll wrap it up, but uh, let's check the battery one more time. And we are down to two bars now. So everything you saw was just one bar between the string trimming and the brush cutting. Look at that. Just amazing. Anyway, I will put the uh, usual links to uh, Amazon and PowerSmart uh, website so that, and a link directly to it so that it's not confused with the regular 3-in-1 uh, string trimmer. This is a brush cutter mainly that is also a string trimmer. This is the one you want. Holy cow. Very impressed. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and y'all have a good one.